Hi viewers, now welcome you to my YouTube channel. In our video today, we are going to look at uh, Kichov's rules. And we're going to see how we can actually apply them in uh, complex electrical circuits. So mostly Kichov's rules are applied on complex electrical circuits to analyze a circuit diagram. So now, what are these two rules? So the first rule is actually called the junction rule. As you can see, there's something more like a junction here, and then there's a fork pathway. So imagine current, which we are calling current one, coming from these ends, and then it enters a junction. Then from here, it splits into these two branches so this one will be named as current two that one is current three so what does this junction rule states it states that the algebraic sum of the currents is equal to zero the algebraic sum of the currents is equal to zero so this one implies as well that the sum of the current in the junction, the one which is flowing into the junction, is equal to the sum of the currents out of the junction. So let's take for instance the current, which is the main current, which is approaching the junction is 4 amperes. Then what it means is when this one splits into two, this one will actually be 2 amperes. That's what, that one may as well be 2 amperes. So that when we bring in this equation, we say the main current, which is 2 amperes, 4 amperes rather, will equal to the sum of current 1 and current 2. If we bring in the figures, that would be a 4. That's a 2 amperes plus 2 amperes. This side we're going to have 4. This side we're going to have 4. So now if we add them algebraically, we're going to move this one over the, the other side. So we're going to have 4 amperes minus 4 amperes, which is going to give us a 0. So it means we've added them algebraically. So you, you should be able to remember the junction the rule states that the current into the junction is equal to the sum of the currents out of the junction. Now, this rule is based on the conservation of energy. Let's move on to the second rule, which we call the loop rule. So now, these are the, are the loops. So now, what does it state? It states that the algebraic sum of the potential differences the potential differences across the components within a loop is equal to zero. So now, for this to hold true, there are certain steps that you have to take for you to actually prove this or to make this work, to make this rule work. So first of all, you consider, let me show you this, you consider the flow of current in the electrical Second, so now the current when you check out the arrows in the diagram are moving like that so current is moving in that direction this one here is moving in that direction so now you have to come up with an imaginary direction in which you feel current is moving or should move so now these are the ones that i've drawn here and the second one there i can i can as well point in the opposite direction in an anti-clockwise direction but this time around I've, I've drawn the imaginary direction in a clockwise direction so now what are some of the rules that you have to look at when you happen to choose the imaginary direction in which current is flowing you have to adhere 
to that imaginary direction. So now what it is is like this. If this is the direction you're saying, this is the direction in which current is flowing, then when we move or we traverse across a battery, then we check this one, the imaginary direction is actually moving in the direction of the actual direction of the current in the circuit. So if you traverse across the battery in the direction of current from the low potential, that's the negative side, to the positive terminal, then the potential difference is actually, there will be a potential rise. So that will be positive. So we can show this person. Uh, v, which is this one here, 1.5. So we've recorded it as a positive figure. And then across the battery, uh, as you traverse from the negative to the positive, the potential, there will be a potential rise. So it will be positive. And then as you traverse across, as you move across or through, any component, a resistor, in the direction of current. You're following that and then you're moving in the direction of current, then there will be a potential drop, meaning the potential difference will be negative. So now, potential difference, which is voltage is given by current times resistance. So we check, this is current one. So what it is, is since there will be a potential drop, which will be negative, we get minus then resistance times current four times current one then we come this side we, have, we will traverse across this second uh, component which is a resist so we are moving in the direction of current so there will be a potential drop so that one will be minus we pick the resistance that is six times current two but the total summation of the potential differences within a closed loop must go to zero. So now after we've come up with this, we need to equate that to zero. So we have formed the second equation away from this equation, but I'll, I'll actually formulate it from here. So now the second equation that we, come up, we can come up with is from here. So we take it that we are moving from here because that's the direction that we are taking. So now we check we are traversing from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. So we're moving from the low potential to the higher potential. So you can say the sum of the potential differences within a closed loop should equal to zero. So now we, we check out the potential differences. So here, since we're moving from the low potential to high potential, that would be positive three. We check here the current within the circuit is moving in that direction and thus we are moving in that direction so we are traversing across this component in the opposite direction of the current so that will be positive positive six times current two then we move this side we come that side we come across this uh, component and we are traversing this component in the opposite direction of the current. See that current is flowing in that direction. The actual current and the imaginary current is flow, flowing in that direction. So it's moving in the opposite direction. So that to the potential, there will be a potential rise here. So that will be positive three, and that is current three. Then that should equal to zero. Okay, so now. <laughs> The other equation, which is the main equation, is the junction arrow. You have to make use of it to say the main current, which is current 1, is this one here. The moment it reaches this junction, it will split into two. So we're going to have current 2 plus current 3. Okay, so now these are the things that we follow. These are the steps that we follow and the rules when we are resolving or we are, anal or we are analyzing complex electrical circuits.
So now, for you to solve now this problem so that you are able to determine the value of current 2, the value of current 3, and the value of current 1, you have to apply simultaneous equations. Now, that's what I'm going to do in the next video. I will show you how you can apply these steps and these rules in analyzing complex electrical circuits, determining those unknown values of currents. Well, so if you've liked the video, hit the like button. Remember to subscribe and uh, turn on the notification bell so that the next time I will roll out videos on on Kitchoff's rules and how you have to solve the problems, you don't miss on any of those videos. Thank you so much for watching. Stay blessed.